We are dealing with a winter emergency on top of a pandemic and playing a critical role in the response to both has been the San Antonio Fire Department. So for today's KSAT Q&A, we are joined by SAFD, SAFD Chief Charles Hood. Chief, thanks for being here. Uh, you all, we keep using that word unprecedented for the weather. You all are experiencing something unprecedented yourselves in terms of just the call volume. Uh, people need you at at such an intense level right now. Talk about how your department is dealing with that. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Tim, good evening, Myra. Thanks for allowing me to be here. It's been a challenge. So um, just take the numbers here. Uh, this is probably record breaking for us, but we're doing about four times the normal amount of uh, emergency calls for service. Yesterday we did 2,608 um, calls for service. And so you take one incident, that one incident may take 15 or 20 fire units and EMS units. So you multiply that, it's been crazy. And so as of today, from midnight till now, we've had 1,544 calls for service. Uh, we've had 16 working fires, which in my time being here in almost 14 years, I don't ever remember that volume of fires. And then three of those have been large-scale uh, second alarms, which uh, involve apartments. So it's, it's been a challenge um, to respond to the needs of the community because people are still having medical emergencies. Um, and then we're trying to get there in treacherous road conditions. And so we have uh, lost at least one fire truck through this event and an EMS unit today that was struck. So um, it's dangerous for us out there. But I just want to thank the men and women that are out there doing their jobs because their families are affected just like all of us. Uh, they're coming to work and their families are cold, without power, without water. So I can't thank them enough for, for everything that they're doing. Chief, while well, your men and women are out there responding to the normal calls that you would, fire calls, uh, people falling and injuring themselves, you're also getting inundated with calls that aren't necessarily fire department calls. Talk about those types of calls that you're getting and what you want the, the folks out there to know. Well, you know, some of the calls that we get on a daily basis are non-traditional types of calls. A lot of times we have the resources to go out and uh, take care of those needs. But uh, when the whole incident started, you can imagine people's water pipes were breaking. So we we're getting a lot of calls for water evacuations to help with that. But it became overwhelming force. So we're not responding on uh, broken pipes unless that pipe is involving some electrical element in the house. One of the other things that we've had to deal with where there are people that are homebound on oxygen. Um, their, their tanks are running low. They're calling their vendors, and the vendors are telling them to call 911 because they can't get a vehicle out to service them. So yesterday we did a ton of uh, oxygen requests, and we continue to do that today. We actually created two units that are going out and uh, servicing people with oxygen needs uh, all alone. We've also had to uh, create a couple of gravel trucks. And you say, why is gravel important? We had a large-scale apartment fire last night. We could not get up the incline uh, to fight that fire. So traction on the fire trucks is a challenge for us. So for us to be able to take our own salt and gravel out to improve the safety of an operation is really critical. So you name it, um, we blew vaccinations today to, to find a secure place for them because of power outages. So this keeps creating different challenges for us, but we just want to ask people to stay home, stay inside, don't walk outside and fall down, uh, stay off the roads and, and help us to get to the people that really, really need us. You know, the uh, no pun intended here, but the temperature of this uh, weather event has really changed from the fun everybody had with the snow day. But in the hours since then, it's become drastic. It's become increasingly serious. We're talking about people who are homebound, as you mentioned, elderly people who don't have the medical equipment up and running they need. They're in the cold. There is the very dire concern that people could ultimately die from this. They could be alone in their homes, not getting the help that they need. Is that a concern for you and your crews? Well, Myra, I think that's a concern for us every single day without even including the weather, that there are people that live in isolation, that live in squalor, that may not have the, the, the necessary resources to take care of them on a daily basis. And now you throw in sub-zero uh, temperatures with uh, no water and no power for extended periods of time 
absolutely that's a concern for us. And so, again, the people that call us, we're going to get there for you. But, again, uh, I, I need the public that's listening to really help us help all first responders by staying at home the best that you can. A challenging time for us all, even more so for our first responders out there. We appreciate you all so much. We appreciate your time, Chief, for being here today. Stay safe out there and uh, keep doing what you guys do. Tim and Mara, thank you guys so much. Be safe.